Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm David Kerr from Lansing in Michigan, and these are your latest news headlines from around the world. A fire which destroyed a historic Catholic church in Canada on Wednesday may have been started deliberately. The St. Francis Church in the Ottawa Piscuit First Nation Territory was completely gutted by the blaze. The church's wooden structure is 104 years old. Thankfully, there were no casualties. The administrator of the local diocese, Archbishop Terence Prendigas, tweeted that arson is suspected as a cause of the fire. He also asked for prayers for the priests and the people of the parish, who he said are devastated by their loss. The church has not been used for public worship since 2019, when the building was found to be structurally unsound. The Vatican has released the official prayer for next year's World Meeting of Families. The event, which will take place in Rome next June, will gather people from around the globe in order to study and celebrate the married family as the building block of a good society. There will also be particular focus given to Pope Francis's apostolic exhortation on marriage and the family, Amoris Laetitiae, which is currently marking its fifth anniversary since publication. The head of the Vatican's Dicastery for Laity, Family and Life, Cardinal Kevin Farrell, says the newly released prayer will help many families and communities to grasp the message of the forthcoming gathering in Rome. The Dicastery and the Diocese of Rome also released the official hashtag of the event. Meanwhile, Pope Francis says that parents who wish to nurture a vocation to the sacred priesthood or religious life in their children should pray to St Joseph. The Holy Father made his comments in a communique marking the World Day of Prayer for Vocations, which will take place this Sunday, April the 25th. The Pope said that the Lord desires to shape the hearts of fathers and mothers by making them capable of undertaking great and generous initiatives adding that the priesthood and religious life need such qualities. The pontiff said that St Joseph's strong witness can guide parents on that journey with their children. The bishops of South Korea have reiterated their call to protect the life of the unborn across the Asian nation. Two years after the country's constitutional court decriminalised abortion, the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Korea's Committee for Life has called upon the South Korean government to amend the law to ensure the protection of the lives of the unborn. In a statement, the bishops described the legalisation of abortion as the public recognition of murder. They also expressed concern regarding those who promote abortion without a sense of guilt, suggesting that reflects a worrying trend towards a general neglect of human life. The bishops warned that such a mindset further promotes and accelerates a culture of death in the form of infanticide, child abuse, murder and suicide. The Church in Korea has now dedicated the month of May to the protection of family life, with parishes across the nation celebrating Holy Mass for the sanctity of life and the protection of the married family. Meanwhile, Canadian pro-lifers will march on Parliament Hill in Ottawa on May the 13th to ask their country's politicians to enact laws that protect life from conception until natural death. The theme of this year's Canadian March for Life is You Are Not Alone, which organisers say aims to show solidarity with the most vulnerable in society. They point out that each day sees 300 unborn Canadians killed due to abortion, while on average 15 vulnerable Canadians are killed by doctors due to laws on assisted dying and euthanasia. They accuse Canada's Liberal Party government of being obsessed with promoting a culture of death. A new US government report has found that some countries across the globe have employed COVID-19 pandemic curbs as a pretext to target religious minorities. The report by the US Commission on International Religious Freedom was published on Wednesday. It documents public health measures put in place across the world to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and measures their impact on freedom of religion or belief. In Sri Lanka, for example, the report found that the country's authorities required the cremation of those who died from COVID-19, including Muslims, for whom the practice is religiously prohibited. And the Commission also listed 14 countries with the worst record on religious freedom, recommending them to the US State Department to be listed as countries of particular concern. The list includes India, Russia, Syria and Vietnam. Meanwhile, the British Parliament has approved a motion declaring the Chinese government's atrocities against the Uyghur Muslim minority in Xinjiang province as genocide. British lawmakers unanimously backed the non-binding motion on Thursday. It was moved by the Conservative Member of Parliament, Nusrat Ghani. MPs heard how the Uyghur people from China's northwest Xinjiang province are arbitrarily detained in re-education camps 
where they are subject to extreme human rights violations, including torture and forced labour. It was also claimed that Uyghur women are made to undergo forced sterilisation. Well, that's your latest headlines. Do join us for more tomorrow. You can also visit us at swnews.org for news updates. Shalom.